Hello and welcome to the My Breast, My Health podcast. My name is Tasha Gandhi-Mahaja and I'm your host, and I'm also a breast surgeon. If you want to learn more about breast cancer and health, then this is the right place for you. If you are a new listener to the podcast, welcome. If you are a regular listener, well, welcome back. And I thought I'd kick off season three by talking about the different types of breast cancers. And there are actually quite a few types of breast cancers. There are a number of ways to categorize them, for example, by what type of cells they originate from or whether they are invasive or not invasive. For this episode, however, I'm going to talk about the five commonest types of breast cancers that we encounter in clinical practice. And it's likely that if you have had breast cancer, you might have had one of these cancers. So number one is invasive ductal carcinomas. This is the commonest type of breast cancer that we see, and it accounts for about 70% of all the breast cancers. The name refers to where the cancer originates from. In other words, for this case, it's the ducts of the breast. It can also be referred to as invasive cancer of non-specific type or NST. You may know that the breast is made of different types of tissue, such as the ducts, lobules, glandular tissue, and fatty tissue. And the ducts are the structures that transport milk through the nipple if you're breastfeeding. So the cancer would have started in the lining of the ducts and then grow and invade other parts of the body. It has the ability to invade. Invasive ductal carcinomas usually present as lumps and are normally also seen on imaging, such as a mammogram or an ultrasound scan. Number two, invasive lobular carcinomas. This is the second commonest breast cancer we see and it accounts for about 15% of cancers. It starts in the lobules of the breasts, which are the structures that produce milk when breastfeeding, and it can grow and invade the surrounding breast tissue. Unlike invasive ductal carcinomas, the presentation of lobular carcinomas can be less obvious. Although it can present as a lump, it's not unusual for it to present in a less discreet or obvious way. Clinically, it can present as a vague skin thickening or nodularity, and on imaging, like a mammogram or an ultrasound scan, it can also be vague and not clear cut. And that is usually why, if you have been diagnosed with invasive lobular cancer, it's not unusual for you to have an MRI scan of the breast as well. An MRI scan looks at the breast in a different way and can give a more accurate picture of a cancer, especially if the mammogram isn't particularly clear cut. After either feeling or seeing a breast abnormality, the next stage will be a biopsy, obviously, to take a sample which will be sent to the lab for analysis. And what we will get back from the pathologist is how active or aggressive the cancer is. And you may know that there are three grades of invasive cancers, and this applies to both invasive ductal and lobular. And they are grade one, two, and grade three. These grades are not the same as stage, and this is an important thing to say. Because when I mention to somebody that they have a grade three cancer, it's not uncommon for people to think that that's the same as stage three, and they're totally different things. Grading actually refers to how the cells look under the microscope and how closely they resemble the normal cell. So the higher the grade, the more active and abnormal looking they are. So grade one is the least active, slower growing with a good outlook or prognosis. Grade three is more active, generally speaking, is faster growing with a poorer prognosis. Number three is triple negative breast cancer. So this is an invasive cancer that does not express either the estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, or express the HER2 protein, hence triple negative. It represents around 15% of all the breast cancers, and it can be linked with the BRCA gene mutation. So you may be recommended to have a genetic test if you have a triple negative breast cancer depending on your age. Most breast cancers express estrogen and progesterone receptors, in other words, ER positive and PR positive, around 80 and 65% respectively. And about 15 to 20% of breast cancers express the HER2 protein or are HER2 positive. And the significance of these is that we can use anti-hormone tablets such as tamoxifen or letrozole and immunotherapy such as trastuzumab and pertuzumab if you express these proteins. But if you have a triple negative cancer, we can't give you these drugs. And so it's likely you will be recommended to have chemotherapy in addition to surgery as part of your treatment. These types of breast cancers can present like any type of breast cancer. 
However, patients with triple-negative breast cancers present with a more aggressive clinical course, including advanced stage at initial diagnosis, early recurrence with metastatic spread, and decreased overall survival. And because of the limited options for triple negative breast cancer treatment, there is a lot of effort to try and find different strategies for treatment. Now, number four is inflammatory breast cancers, which is a rare type of breast cancer. And this accounts for about one to 5% of all breast cancers. And the diagnosis of this can be quite challenging because it can present and be mistaken as infection of, or mastitis. It presents in a more aggressive manner. And it's suggested that one in three patients who have inflammatory breast cancer would have had metastatic disease at the time of diagnosis. And unlike most breast cancers, inflammatory breast cancers do not present as a lump. Instead, the breast will look red, swollen, and the skin thickened like an orange peel. The treatment usually involves chemotherapy first, followed by a mastectomy and then radiotherapy. And the fifth type of breast cancer is DCIS, which stands for ductal carcinoma in situ or in situ. So if we are talking about cancer, in situ or in situ cancer means that it is found within its original place and doesn't have the ability to spread elsewhere. So DCIS originates from the lining of the milk ducts. It is the type of cancer that is picked up on screening mammograms. And they usually present as abnormalities, usually what we call microcalcification on mammograms rather than presenting as breast lumps. There are three grades of DCIS, low grade, intermediate grade, and high grade. And the higher the grade, the more active the cancer is. You may think, well, if this type of cancer doesn't invade other parts of the breast tissue and body, then why treat it at all? And this is a good question. The thing is, at the moment, we don't have enough information or knowledge to know what will happen to DCIS if it is left alone and whether it would change to invasive cancer. So that's why at the moment we treat DCIS with surgery. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and you can find me on socials at Dr. Tasha G. So that's Dr. Tasha G. And I would love for you to connect me over there. You can ask me any questions you might have. And yeah, I'm so glad the podcast is back and I shall see you in the next episode. Take care.